ladies and gentlemen, for your time and attention. Today is another episode of the Future Hour, and today we're so honored to have our dear and amazing and smart and lovely guest, Marcela Cavanhad, to be on our podcast and be our guest and share her journey and her thoughts and thinking process. So, thank you so much for your time and、uh, welcome to the show. Ah,、uh, thank you so much, Jesse, for for inviting me to the show and for the podcast. A podcast, and well, looking forward for chatting a bit more and to know what we are doing and to show you what is Crypto Plus and what I'm doing. For those who you don't know, Marcela, she is the CEO of the Crypto Plaza. So,、um, along that side, with a question, could you tell us a little bit of what you are building there? Yeah, of course. So here in Crypto Plaza, we are building a community of crypto、uh, because there's a lot of communities around the world, but most of them are like English-speaking communities or other-speaking communities. But in Spanish, there was not like one trying to do like all the work, like trying to connect Spanish-speaking people to the English people. Connecting different、uh, projects that are around the world, not just here in Spain or Latin America, but also to connect these projects to the projects that are in Europe or in、uh, United States. Or we are hopefully going to do the same with Asia because we think it's very important. And mostly, mostly in crypto and blockchain is like you can do this like real globally economy, like this really. Per- Let's you do that. So we're building that. So making many meetups,、uh, making,、um, translating documents for people, so people know what they, some protocols, what they are about in Spanish, and also making networking for people too, so they can work with I don't know with Dai, or they can work with Balancer, or they can meet like the CEOs. And developers of these projects. That is、uh, fantastic. Is I realize the、uh, the importance of building this platform, right? So besides in the blockchain space, that there is the、uh, the blockchain protocols and the, the projects out there, right? But also the community, the people who talk about, who cares about, who connect with one another through. This technology, and you are the person, and you and your team are providing that platform. Which I have done something similar before back in the states,、uh, starting in 2017. I think that is just super, super fascinating. And could you tell us about what you're working on at the moment, and what do you have planned for the summer? Ah yes, totally. So in this moment, we are working like、uh, making a new、uh, web for Crypto Plaza, and for because we think it's important to have a place,、uh, like for the professionals. Like there's a lot of people doing things that are great, like your、right. podcasts or some、uh, YouTube influencers, or there's a lot of like being crypto. Uh, there's territorial Bitcoin, and there's a lot of people making news, and we wanted to be like the other place because there's a lot of、uh, things that are build, getting to build here in the community. So the place where these people that want to build or are building things can go and connect with other people. So、uh, we're in that process, making like the new web page of Crypto Plaza. That's going to be great. And for the summer, for the community, we have a summer camp on DeFi, and、uh, to make like a review of what have happened with the stable coins lending, uh, AM, AMM, uh, with uh, insurance, with options, what what is going on in the in the DeFi space. So we're going to do that, and we also have like every week some event about someone in our community. So it's going to be really great. Although here in Spain, as maybe I don't know how much time you've been here, but in Spain,、uh, an August is like totally stop. Like the Spain stop, and everyone is on vacation. So in August, we're going to be more like. On vacations too, 
but we're still going to have some events or mostly like digital online. That's amazing. So you mentioned about the DeFi event. So is that uh, free or people have to pay for it and is it online or offline? Because that sounds super, super interesting. Well, it's going to be online, uh, um, but the first session is going to be here in Crypto Plaza next week uh, on Tuesday. So hopefully you can be here. Uh, we're going to talk about stable coins, make your DAO with DAI, Terra, Amford, uh, USD, uh, Tether. So it's going to be great. We, we're going to talk about everything that's going on because I don't know, for people that maybe didn't know much about crypto, like when last year was very difficult for everyone, like everything stopped. But I think like for crypto was the year and for DeFi too. Well, like everyone stopped, but crypto like go went like 10 years uh, in the future. And it was great and everything has been so fast during this last year so many things have changed in DeFi since last year so we're going to try to uh, speak and teach like what had happened like in a very resume and bootcamp summer uh course by bootcamp i I assume, right? So, so it's it's, on, it's going to be online, and then it's going to be uh, free, or it's going to be a course. Well, it's for mostly it's for our community, for the Crypto Plaza community, the people that are in our right, yeah, in our community, our members. But also, we if you want to go and to be invited, we're going to invite some people because we think it's like. When you go to have like a course, it's better when you have like smaller groups so you can really concentrate and make questions and do it more dynamic. We don't like like being like just the election, but to do it like more dynamic so people can do everything like practice um, and they can participate to on what they know about that protocol. So it's going to be more open like a um, discussion too. And I saw that on, I believe on Meetup that the Crypto Plaza have roughly um, like, um, if I remember cor correctly, like 1,000 to uh, 1,100 uh, members on the Meetup. And so when you're building this Crypto Plaza, this um, from the beginning till this day and towards the future, do you have... Um, you know, have you had this like idea target audience in your mind or, or I just, or just you are dedicated to grow it and make it bigger. So, yeah. No, that's the thing. We don't want it to make the, make it like very big. Yes. We're going to do like many public things so everyone can see them, what we are building in the community. But I think the community, we want to make it smaller. We want to maintain it like smaller. So what I was telling you, we can ma maintain like a real real community, like where people know each other, where, where we can do like dynamics. We have a DAO in Crypto Plaza. So I think when it goes too big, you lose like the connection with the people. So we still want it to be like more concentrated for people that really are like making things in crypto, like what they are really building for everyone and us, like for the public to make sure everyone knows what our community is building and in the world will. Mm. Okay, interesting. So, well, obviously I'm, I'm sure that I will be able to find out more about, you know, um, the community of the Crypto Plaza next week when I go there. And so I would imagine that the Crypto Plaza have two parts, which is the part of people are in the blockchain space. They have their own project. And the other part is the people who are just interested in learning more, or maybe they want to find a job in the space, right? And uh, I would imagine that Crypto Plaza, there will be like more, uh, the members will be more people who 
know enough about the space already, or they have actually have a project itself. That group is bigger than, um, let's say, the newbies or the people who are interested and just want to learn more and finding a job in the blockchain space. Is that correct? I'm just, you know, imagining um, <laughs> right now. Yeah, that's so. totally correct. You, you, you really like get it. It's like um, there's a lot of places where you can learn how to get into crypto, but we want to be the part like where you are already in crypto. What else can you do? How else can you help this protocol, these people to do more and to help more other people? We have uh, like a part that we are helping some startups, like accelerating them. And we have another part that is like uh, developers or people that want to search for a job or uh, invest investment uh, people that are investing uh, for these startups like to really develop so we are like making these two things come together I think that when you are that's such an interesting way of building a community um, which which personally I have I which personally somehow in my mind I always been thinking about you know you want to build a community and you grow it fast and you want to scale it as much as possible maybe that's like two VC that's two Silicon Valley you know world of thinking and when you are exactly what you guys are doing at Crypto Plaza is like maintaining um nice and tight community so that you build your own ecosystem in this way right you have the accelerator you have the uh, the part of, uh, you know, the investment, and I, th I think that's extremely interesting. That's super, super interesting. Wow. Do we make it very big, and we go like this, like a lot of members, and but when you do that, you you don't have like the com a, a community. So in this way, we have a community. We can help our projects to launch. We can help them with their marketing. We know that many of these startups will come and go or in one moment they will be helping other startups and helping the community. We think like that's the way to build, like helping everyone. We have like in our community um, a startup that's called Ethic Hub, like is one that I, I really like. We have a lot and I really like everyone. But this startup, like they started at the same time, Crypto Plaza, and they, they now they have been like more bigger and they have helped other startups and they have like do like collaboration partnership with other startups that started with Crypto Plaza. So it's like when you have this like economy goes around and can go bigger. Because when you're trying to do things like by your own trying to search for the right people for the right uh investing people or the right developer people or when you go by your own is is more difficult to do it you you can't do a, everything by your own so this community pretends like to give all the um herramientas uh all the the things that they need to really develop their their projects absolutely i totally agree uh there's this uh american uh arthur or she's a writer and her name is helen keller and she what you said you remind me one quote of her she said alone we can do so little and together we can do so much which is um which is i think is exactly the definition of the endeavor of humanity and for um this whole blockchain space as well, right? Whether it's Bitcoin or Ethereum or the projects that um, um, Crypto Plaza is incubating, right? It's always that the more um, awareness, the more people are concentrated and focusing on towards the same goal that is make the technology and um, or we change the world, if you will. That's how we do it. So uh, super interesting. And I want... I'm wondering that um, another question is that what made you got into the blockchain space? Okay, so that's like a really crazy part because um, as we were talking about, I started like in the fashion business 
but in Colombia, I'm I'm Colombian. So right. uh, yes. when I got here to Madrid, I, I I knew that Bitcoin exists and I knew something, but it was like really far from me. Like it was it wasn't something that I was really like into. And being here and trying to find a job uh, because being in other country, uh, although it's the same uh, speaking language, it was a different culture. Uh, so trying to do that, I met Jesus, that is the founder of Crypto Plaza, uh, in a meetup on Google Campus, like where we met, and I I don't know why we start talking, and I needed a job, and I start to selling myself, like what I can do, and um, what are my skills, and well everything, and he was like, maybe I will need someone like you, like in some month uh, for a project that I'm doing. And I was like, okay, count with me. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it's about crypto, but I will learn. And then I start working with him and it's been like a process of two years learning about everything about crypto, getting my own cryptos, like uh, getting to know all these projects and learning with them what they are about, what blockchain is about, what crypto is about. And I am in love with the ecosystem, with the people, what you, we are building and being part of like the future of what we're building. It's like a place where I feel like very complete for some reason. And so that's how I got into crypto. Like, I don't know, life, the universe. <laughs> Absolutely. I do believe in the universe and I believe in synchronicity as well. Uh, so I can definitely relate with that. So you mentioned that we met the other co-founder of the Crypto Plaza, Jesus. He, uh, this was uh, when, you two, when you two met back in the days, was 2017 or 2018 or 2019? was uh, 2019, early 2019. So I start working, I, I was working like in HSBC, uh, like a part-time job while I found something that I really wanted. I was working with, like in the reception. Um, it's a great job. I really admire the people that are in the reception of anything because it's a really hard job dealing with people <laughs> sometimes uh, more in the traditional yes. bank part uh, and was like great for me like I was like I was really hoping like all year like when is going to be my time to go work with Jesus so yes yeah, was 2019 uh, early 2019 and and October 2019, I started working with him here in Crypto Plaza in the space. And that's when my, I think, like my really journey began. Wow, that's, <laughs> that's lovely. And I think each of us will have a um, unique story to tell when it comes to how we get into uh, the blockchain space. And um, even yesterday, I listened to this another podcast. They call it... <clears throat> <clears throat> they call it the orange pill, which is the reference um, from the movie Matrix. Um, you you have seen the movie Matrix, right? Yeah, right. Yes, I have. I have seen it. And okay, an orange pill, like that's another color because it was it wasn't uh, red and blue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, right. So the red and blue was, uh, you know, one for the reality, one for, you know, in the dream. And this orange pill is, um, they say the orange pill is so funny because like, it essentially, you know, when people look at the image of Bitcoin, it's kind of orange, right? You know, or let's like, say the Bitcoin logo is orange, right? And although technically it doesn't have any color, you know, or because it's, you know, as written on the blockchain, you know, using, you know, uh, all the mining um, and algorithm and whatnot, right? So, but they call it the orange pill, which is just so funny, right? Like how, which is um, when they took, or when you and I took this orange pill was essentially a metaphor of when we decided to learn more and purchase our first 
Bitcoin will first uh, friction off the Bitcoin, and then they call that uh, taking the orange pill, which I find is so funny and also it's very uh, it's, 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 it's amazing metaphor. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, totally amazing. Yeah, and that's what happened to me. I took the the orange pill, and uh, that's how like I woke up. I think so. Well, I'd like to think so. Thank you a lot for sharing your journey into the space. Um, I'm wondering, could you share some advice to the younger audience out there maybe for maybe they're like 19 or 20 years old, they are about to graduate from college or university, they want to uh, explore their career and they want to learn more about the space, even find a job in the space. Do you have any advice for people like that, how they could start their career in the blockchain space? And, you know, we could be in Spain or could be anywhere in the world. I um, want to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, I think it's not that much of where you do it, like uh, the place on, on Earth. Um, but it's more like how you do it. Like you <laughs> have to work like really hard. That's one thing that no, nothing is easy. You have, I think it's very, it's very good to be self taught like to really uh learn about a lot uh read a lot if you want to go like into crypto i think there is an open source mostly everything is there so you you have to just like tuck your on the door it's very important to go uh and connect with some community that can help you like guide you where you want to go i think something that ne- no one told me and it's very important, I think, for everyone is like to know something about finances. It's not because you want to make a lot of money, but also, yes, but if you want to help or if you want just to understand how this world um, works, you, you, you need to know about finances. And I, I think that uh, Orange Peel woke me in that way, too. Because I think many people and because no one never told us how the world works uh, financially, that is the thing that rolls like the economy and, and everything that goes on is like, how does it work? And I think it's very important. And crypto is like a very good space to learn this because if you understand how it works in crypto, you understand it so much better in the traditional uh, system so you know what to do you know where to start you you can uh i don't know uh have like more opportunities creating something is that if that what you want or uh having a job it's like it depends a lot of on this but i think like that's really important like that's my advice like learn about finances and read and Crypto is a great place like to learn what is everything, a lending, a collateral. I, I don't know, all these things that seems like so hard to understand and so adult, but they are really things that we do every day. So it's just like a thing you have to go and read and learn. So that's my advice. Learn about finances so you know what you can do in life and how to manage your life because when you know about finances and you know how to manage them uh, you can travel you can work you can help you can do everything yes absolutely so i agree and i totally agree wholeheartedly and i think on top of what you're saying about one must know enough about finance before joining the uh taking the orange pill or you know, after they take the orange pill, they can go learn more about it, right? Because I'm reflecting on my life. Um, even when I studied abroad in the, uh, the States, uh, in America, on the East Coast, and still I took the fundamental accounting. And however, in that accounting class, they did not teach us or anybody, I don't think any institution on the planet, teach people about the what is money. Um, it just essentially saying that uh, monies came from central bank and they can print it uh, as much as possible. They can print it whenever they want. And it's like, 
essentially in a way that the way they portray it is like God in a way, right? Because this institution can do whatever it wants and with no consequences, essentially. And it doesn't even make sense, right? <laughs> and um, and so many people believe in this, um, especially in the Bitcoin and blockchain space, is that that actually the the existence of central bank is actually using inflation as a tool to manipulate the market. Meanwhile, they call it the free market, and they're just using inflation and uh, printing more bills as a tool for their own purposes. And there's so much trouble in that. And also a lot of people in the Bitcoin and blockchain space believe in this. Um, maybe this is a little bit too hopeful and too uh, optimistic, but they believe uh, fix the money, you can fix the world. So those are um, some interesting thoughts. Yeah, it's like when you're like in, in the blue pill and you're a bit asleep, uh, you trust like the system so much and you trust like your money in the bank is safe. And But you never realize that every year, year you are losing, like if you live like in the United States or Europe, just like 5%. But if you live like in countries like Colombia, Venezuela, Argentina, and other in the world, you're losing much, much more every year, every second. So, and and you just trust like uh, the numbers you see in your bank account is the money you have there, but you never realize that that money is never there. And the central banks are like doing that their thing and and you really think of them like a god that have your money and can print uh everything but it's not is that's not the way it's just the way that they have sell it to us but you you never stop like thinking like what happened if everyone in the world goes to the bank and ask for their money do they have it where do they have it <laughs> It's like, it's crazy. So they they will probably go bankrupt because they kind of they kind of like take your money as a saving and then they use it for, uh, they, they they lend it out they lend it out to other other people other companies right and essentially even the bigger company is or the more tied to the other corporation the relationship have with the bank the lower the interest rate or the lower the um how to say do uh the easier it is for those corporations to borrow money. And so anyway, which is crazy, right? So since you mentioned uh, Venezuela and Colombia, right? Because I heard that because of hyperinflation going on in Venezuela, that now there are actually, you know, like their bills being... Um, like people just throw their paper bills on the street, you know, they, you know, they're like kind of clogging the toilet and because, because of how much the hyper inflation it is. So could you talk a little bit about that and maybe essentially what's been happening, you know, um, we don't have to get too political here, but, but, but like, you know, maybe the things going on from the political angle and what it and what kind of impact it has on the economy on and on money and how does that change people's attitude and the people's life um in south america maybe especially in colombia yeah well as i think everyone in the world knows colombia in this moment is like in a very difficult time because i think people are waking up because what you're saying is like i'm not going to be political if it's uh, a political from from right or from the left, uh, as you tell it in Spanish, derecha o izquierda. But uh, more of what the situation have been, have we been like in this blue pill for too many years, like counting for our other governments to do something, and they are very corrupt, and the system is not working, and people get more poor like every day like it's crazy like just like for 
this half year the uh, what you were saying the desinflation the inflation of the um, of the pesos colombianos are like 11 uh, percent so it's like we are not like in Venezuela moment but I think we're going there and it's not because of what we call like the, the manifestations or as we call it, paro nacional but it's about the the way of how they are managing all the war in Colombia and the corruption and the narcotraffic and the guerrillas so I said I don't want to go to political because I think some you have to it's not that you don't have to take a uh, part of something because you have to but yes it's like i think colombia is waking up and i don't know what's going to happen like some people say like if we choose another uh person we're going to get like venezuela but i think like that that's just like a political uh discourse like to to convince people to keep on voting for them and not for other one It's like just like washing them their brains into do something as well as uh, making them believe like if we go other way politically we are going to be uh, more poor but we are already very poor country so we don't know what's going to happen and Venezuela yes it is like very serious the situation is I think people stop talking about it but the is like very very i don't know uh sad and because it's a very rich country on the people uh and the ecosystems bio ecosystems and uh everything they have there as colombia colombia is a very rich place for everything that is like uh, on weather on water on we have rain Uh, rainforest, we have deserts, we have we have everything in just Colombia. So I think it's a very rich place managed by very bad people. I think so. And and yes, in in Venezuela, I know people like sell their their bills, like they they sell them for for anything, like in the street, or it's like crazy, like with one. Euro, you can buy like so many things and be like rich like it's crazy that inflation is is so sad for the people like living there i don't know what we can do i hopefully i don't know if crypto is going to change the world but i think it's going to do like a step farther far farther on changing things that maybe people that doesn't have like uh the a bank account can have something for their savings or for receiving something and doesn't lose it because it's going to be in in uh, bolivares so i don't know it's like a, a very hard situation that really touched like my heart is um, but we have to see next year what what's going to happen in with the elections Yes, it's a um, very fascinating perspective that you gave. So let's say next year with the election that things get worse. How worse could it get? And how, and you know, you mentioned if Colombia heading towards the direction where, where Venezuela is and how... Is there like a um, timeline for that? If people don't wake up, what might happen? And what are the timelines like? Well, I don't know, because it's more like an opinion and guessing, because you you never know. You hope you vote for someone and you hope the best, because, of course, you're voting for the best. Um, I think if people didn't like wake up in this moment in Colombia, I think, yes, we were going to be like Venezuela. And we were going to be like with more problems with everything, narco-traffic and, and drugs, uh, businesses. 
because I think everyone in the governments are very corrupted already. Maybe they started with a nice, uh, with a good uh, vibration, like started well, but then when you are like in a bad environment and you get like all these things coming to you, you you change your mind and you accommodate to the, to the place where you are. So I think it's important like for next year so to change everyone that is in the government, like refresh it. I think the change has to go in and people are already changing and waking up. Not not everyone, because there's people that are still thinking that uh, we are going to be like Venezuela. But I think we are already in that way if we don't change in this moment. So I don't know. We I I think you have we have to wait and hope for the best and cross your fingers and help whatever the way you can on anywhere, not just Colombia or Argentina or Venezuela or Africa, like everywhere in the world you have to help so people can be more educated, have better opportunities in the world. So because I think that's the important thing. We have more education and uh, opportunity that makes more opportunities. You be, Things can change. I think about this quote that I heard it and read it from somewhere. It says, power corrupts people and absolute power, absolute corrupt people. Or corrupt people, absolutely. Right. So, and that's something I heard about it before and many, many times. However, yesterday I heard about this new fresh ideas. So, imagine what I said is, um, assume it's true, right? Power corrupts and absolute power absolute corrupt people however it is those very few times that whether it's miracle or grace that when people are in the power position but not being corrupted by it it was exactly those people who determined or set a direction towards the progress of the humanity or a country or a place or a community Right. So that's some fresh ideas I heard and I've been reflecting upon, you know. And so with that said, maybe we might need to uh, vote for Marcella for the president. Hey, um, would you be open for that? <laughs> um, maybe I'm just going to still doing like other job, but I will help whatever the person is going to be there if I have to. Of course, I think blockchain like. And all these like experiments that are going that are happening in the blockchain of governance, uh, I think, like that's going. To, I hope that's going to be the future. The future of everyone like clean voting and with no corruption and with everyone participating and earning something about the participation in the governance. Yes, absolutely. Like uh, technology could bring so much progress, right? So uh, countries such as Estonia, I believe that, which I just got there, received their e-residency um, approved this month. And they've been implementing everything on essentially all the government affairs on the blockchain for like 10 to maybe 15 years. And then they've been doing that. And I believe that countries such as China and America, for a fact, either most likely within this government, they are super smart and experts within the government that work with blockchain already. And in the future, that is starting today, I think more and more governments, they will have like blockchain experts or consultants, right? Consulting them on um, how to use this technology. Essentially, like it's like, I don't know, like White House has a website, you know, it's like when a government institution or maybe you think about a politician has his or her own Twitter, right? Which just means that they're adapting into this technology and it's just, um, it's just a matter of time. Uh, I know for a fact and I believe in that as well. Um, so that, that may be something interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be awesome. I think that's how... We younger people can help to create something new for, I don't know if next generations, but yes, for, for the future. 
And for us. You mentioned the future. I would like to ask something about your past. So, is what is your、um, greatest accomplish、um, in your life so far, or your greatest accomplishment in your life?、Uh, yeah, <laughs> could you tell us? Yeah, well, I think I'm still too young. I think、uh, when you are older, you will see like. I think we have many accomplishments, like we were creating. I think someday we will have like a big one, a more bigger one. But I think like one that I or some, because I have a few that I have is like I always have been searching for my own path. Like in Colombia, it's very normal like people to be like your parents put you in like. In a path because they have like a friend of a friend that can help you go into this company or、uh, this friend knows someone and you can go or your uncle is and you can go in the company. But I always like and my brothers and sisters too have like make、uh, make our own path and search our own thing. And I, I always have been like the universe have always been with me. I think so, and I always have like these good opportunities and meeting like the great, so many people and very good people, like in all my path. So I think like making my own path and、uh, doing what I am doing, like coming here to Spain too. Alone and searching for my job and doing everything is one of my greatest accomplishments. And having this job and doing what I'm doing. Yes,、yeah, so it's absolutely beautiful, and I can totally relate with that.、Um, I did the similar thing, and actually, matter of fact, I'm still doing the similar thing. That I, when I was 18, I just moved.、Um, be- actually, before that, I never even travel outside of China at all. And when I was 18, I just hop on a plane. Um, I never seen this university. I never been to America. I just hopped on a plane. I went to America, and my life has totally changed ever since. And then, recently, the past two years, I did that over again. Left LA, went back to Beijing for a little bit, start learning Spanish, and now I'm doing it over again in Spain. And so I totally, absolutely can relate with that. So I、uh, want to acknowledge you for your courage and. At the same time, this is something I've been reflecting more. Even the question I ask, it could be a little bit deceiving, right? Kind of because it's like when people think about accomplishment, think about like people think about this concept of like they have made it, right? But、um, I more and more so realize that、um, the journey and the goal, or the journey and the destination, is actually one. Is About you learn more, you do things, and you make mistakes, and you learn from that, and you just keep betting day by day, and it's all those like little wins accumulated together, and then there will be the quantum leap, and then that will be how the things change fundamentally, and then that's where society, where other people said that oh they made it or、uh, they did something big. And I think that is、um, everyone should be extremely aware of, and everyone should really see that super super clearly, and not have some kind of romanticized ideas about success or about accomplishments. And I think that is super important for、um, everybody, whether young or older, or.、Um, They want to be successful, or they want to make a lot of money, or not.、Um, I think that is something fundamental everybody should understand about life in general as well. So, <laughs> yeah. Totally, I agree totally with you. It's not like the big event. It's like all the events that go through your life that you work for, that you learn, that takes you to the place where you want to be. That. Maybe you 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 want this, but the universe and what you do always like make、uh, guide you through what will be your place. I don't know. It's going to be a lot of money,、uh, or earning a lot of money, or having I don't know a house, or 
building like this big, big thing in crypto. I don't know what's going to be. I think it's like everything you do is like, and if you earn it by your own, I think that's the path and that's what you really gain uh, on life. Now, here are some questions for myself and audience to understand more about uh, Marcella as a person. So <laughs> what roles do love and affection play in your life? And like say family, um, you know, maybe some comments about family, about lover, about partner and all that. I think love is very important. Like you have your family, but you also you have like the family you choose that can be like your lover, your partner or your friends. For me, that is very important. And that's like the thing that I miss the most about Colombia, like my family, my family being my friends and my, my mother, sister, brother and everyone like in my closer family. But um it's very important to have like that group that supports you and you support them because you have to give back so love is very important uh being a good person is very important i think you have always to treat everyone with the greatest smile and the most uh best way you can everyone i think everyone deserves it well, mostly everyone deserves it. <laughs> I think if people do very wrong, well, you don't deserve <laughs> my <laughs> love. And, but mostly everyone. And of course, my partner. I think like love with like a, a partner in love is like to be a partner, not to be just a lover. Uh, I think that's very, for me, it's important to have like that support and to give that support to someone else. So that's very important. I, I'm always supporting my my brother and my sister with their projects. They are, I'm so proud of them. I'm like the big sister. Uh, like they are always like, Marcela, please stop. Because I am always like, oh, you're so good. And I'm telling everyone about my sister and my brother and what they have accomplished because I'm so proud of them. Um, my sister is a musician. She had like her own project group. She her project is called Soy Emilia. You can search it in YouTube. Uh, last year she was nominated for New Artist in Latin Grammys. Okay. And my brother have his own uh, fashion brand uh, and is going to is big and now he's like. Uh, selling in Mexico, he wants to sell like in United States and then come here. So I think uh, they are. I'm really proud because they have worked like a lot to do their own path too. So love and family is very important for me. This love of like selfless, selfless, so or selflessly uh, action are just a huge. M- motivator and huge support for um for the people around us our family friends lover um partner to go after what they really want right so i think that's something amazing and and obviously we're gonna link your uh, sister's uh, her youtube channel her spotify and the fashion brand of your brother here in the um notes as well and uh, who knows, maybe uh, my fashion brand and your brother's that uh, we can do a collaboration or something like that. You know, we're open to that. So, you know, talking about synchronicity and universe. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know. Maybe, maybe I I think that what he is doing, like, is really awesome. Like, it's a good product. He's helping people. It's like everything is made in Colombia. So it's really good because he's helping, like, to give jobs there. So... I think, yeah, you have to see the brand and see if it match what your your fashion brand is doing. That would be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait. So, you know, follow-up question with that since we're talking about love. Are you, uh, Marcella, are you um, 
you know, do you have like a um, romantic partner at right now in the moment? Are you married? Do you have kids or do you want kids? What's your like, you know, something like that? Because I have a follow up question, you know, after that. Yeah. Okay. So I have a boyfriend. I have a partner. We have been together since I got here to Madrid. It was destiny. I don't know the universe. I'm still talking about the universe, and we've been uh, almost three years together. It's great. We have a cat that's called Aradia, and I love her. Um, I'm crazy. I'm the crazy cat lady. <laughs> And we support each other so much. That's great. Uh, but I'm not going to have kids. Uh, I want to be an aunt, but I don't want my own kids. I want more cats. <laughs> like, is it a decision you made, like, for the moment, for the time being, or you don't want a kids, like, period? Um, j just curious, eh? Yeah, yeah. No, I don't want kids for the time being. Like, I... I Okay. This is a thing that is very like difficult for people because people have always tell me, no, you have to wait until you have 27. And I already been 27 and I don't want kids. So people are saying like, you have to wait until you have 30. I already had 30 and I don't want kids. And today people say, no, you have to wait until you have 35 because you're going to want to have kids. And I'm almost there and I still don't want kids. It's not that I don't love kids. I love I love my friends that have kids. I am like crazy aunt and I'm always like sending them uh, gifts and <laughs> uh, making this FaceTime with them. But I don't know. I, I don't feel the call of being mom. I, and if the moment gets and I want to have kids, uh, okay, I will have them or I will adopt someone or I will help a kid. Uh, I don't know, something will happen, but I really love being an aunt and being the crazy cat lady. Yes. <laughs> amazing, amazing aunt. Uh, oh, hopefully one day I can see your uh, um, your cat or cats. Uh, that would be so amazing, you know. I'm not sure if um, they're allowed in the office or a co-working space. And um, here's why I asked the first question is that, so also this for the audience, right? Like many audience there out there, they're young and maybe they're seeing somebody or maybe they want to be in a relationship, right? So for you that have this loving and um, harmonious relationship, do you have any advice to you know the younger generation out there um when they become more um when, when they um establish a more profound and romantic relationship how do you have any like secrets or the things you always keep in mind for a romantic and successful and harmonious relationship i think uh you have to you, you never know a person like totally because you change a lot and the other person change a lot. I think it's more like to really know how to synchronize and to really accept the other person as he, she, or whatever it is. Accept it like uh, with his things and to know your limits. That's so important to know your limits, where, what can you give and what you are not willing to give. And, and there are many small things you have to get in mind. It's not like, not, not always the big, the big things, like the small things that really affect, um, and more like when you live together, like uh, the towel, <laughs> you know, like there are many people that never, put the towel in their place and they leave it in the floor. So if that thing is going to give you a headache and you're going to make it like a problem, because for you it's very important to see the towel in its place, 
and the other person is not important for the other person to do it. Don't make the other person doing it because he is how he is or she is how she is. It's like she's going always to be like that. You have to accept it and you have to, if, if it really affects you, you take the towel and put it in the place because the person that is affected is you, not the other way around. Uh, that happens a lot with me and my boyfriend. Like he never uh, make the bed. I normally I get earlier and I go first out of the house and he gets like more sleeping than me and he leaves uh, a bit more late the house and he never makes the bed. And for me, it was like a thing, a visual thing that I needed. So it's like, okay, so you have to think, this really affects me? This is really a big deal? Do I really have to make like many things like a problem about this? Or can I accept it and go through? Like, it's okay. So if I have time and I get early in the evening in the house, I make the bed because for me it's important to sleep in a bed that is made. But for him it's like nothing. So not making a big deal about that is one thing when you live with, with someone. And when you choose, and for the choosing the right person, I don't know if that, that exists, but you can really know what you want in life and make sure, like I'm always asking the person that I am going out, like if they want to have children, because I know I don't want. But I know if I go out with someone that wants kids, that would be like an issue for the long time. So that's like a point that I go like, no. Or food. For me, food is very important because I like eating very well. And I, I don't know, go to many restaurants and, and learn about uh, international cuisine and making things in my house and eating everything I love to I don't know, everything. I love food. So for me, it's very important the person that really likes food. So if you like food and you go out with someone that only eats burgers, you're not going to be happy. Like that really small things really affect uh, a partner or the, your love life. Although it seems like crazy, but it really affects. Or if you like to travel and going to museums and getting early, because I am that kind of person when I travel and go to a new place, I always am like 8 a.m. I'm ready to go out and see what this place is about. <laughs> and if you go out with someone that wants to go only shopping or only going to, I don't know, the I don't know, the latest place or, or not wanted to do that things, it, it's not going to work because you will never be able to travel together. So there are things you have to keep in mind how you really are and look so, for someone that maybe doesn't have to be the same as you, but you can share some of these things together. Amazing that you shared. Um, it's like from where uh, from various different perspectives and i think they are all super super important and i think it's i think either maria or the uh last guest christina she also mentioned something similar um when i asked them about relationship advice or um what they have learned right is something like you know yourself so well truly this self-awareness know what like what you mentioned right what you can give up and what you cannot right so you so you know exactly this boundary of who you are and what you like and what you don't like and what are something that absolutely unacceptable and you essentially do your best to find somebody that have the similar boundaries and um, in, in a way, right? Well, at least, you know, it's impossible or maybe 
mathematically it's not impossible, right? Or maybe it could be challenging to find somebody have the exactly same boundary, exactly same standard, and everything has to be exactly like. I think that could be challenging, but it could, but but also I think it's extremely possible to find somebody that if when you compromise and when they compromise and you two can have a good time together and it's sustainable and you two are genuinely care for each other and you two also understand each other's boundaries you two know each other's preferences and i think that is also even more spice it up the relationship makes it more fun and and yeah just super interesting it comes down to self-awareness and know your boundary and um you know, like, and also, you know, where they know what you want, right? Know what you're looking for. Um, because like you mentioned, like, I'm like this, when I do things like this, I obviously want, you want to be able to go out and spend time with somebody who is, you know, you two can have fun together, right? Because um, relationships should be based upon fun and love and the good positive vibes, right? So, wow, absolutely. That's fascinating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's so crazy that Maria and your other guests and I like share that thing and many of my friends too because sometimes we see it and we talk about these things and we see how important it is for us to have awareness of what we really like and to know that a, when you are with someone is to be a partner or to be um I don't know. Uh, it's not your equal because I don't know. We are not equals. Uh, people are not equal every time. Um, but to know that uh, you are in life to be a partner, a partner, a partner, like in, in anything, like in business, like in play, like in every, in anything, like to be a partner and to know how to go through the things, to know how to give a space and to get a space and, to respect each other and to support each other in in the journey as as long as the journey goes i i think mm, is not like for a lifetime or maybe yes or maybe like for a while but during that time uh, to be respectful and supporting and loving i think that's extremely important and um and i you know, connected with everything what we talk about today. And I think love, that state and that energy is deep within all of us. And everybody have that. And everybody could, this is a time of potential, right? I believe everybody could be loving all the time. But it is this world or the society where a lot of time because of money or because of what they believe in, you know, for example, uh, they believe that they, you know, old ways, they believe that they have to be mean to make money or they believe that they have to um, doing lying or doing like things not coming from integrity to make money. But those beliefs could be changed. And that's why, you know, the cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and the whole blockchain technology is very interesting and extremely important for a brighter future because this way that we are reinventing the monetary system, the financial system, and all these things that come along with it. And when we do that right, which I believe that we are heading towards that direction, that potentially maybe that our human being will just be nicer and kinder kinder to each other towards each other and um that is something i would like to believe in and um uh, me personally striving towards um every day as well and also why i uh, did the podcast so <laughs> yeah yeah i think just what you say is I believe the same and I hope uh, things will change or a bit at least on everything that we are doing and this is just the start or of something new and I'm really grateful for you to have this podcast and doing it so real like just chatting 
between us and not making it so like <laughs> you know like an interview where you go like a bit like uh nervous about it sorry for my spanglish no 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 it's it's amazing it's amazing and um so we're definitely gonna do uh, another follow-up episode next week when i'm uh, at the crypto plaza and because i have more questions and one of those things that we must talk about is that your favorite restaurants and favorite foods in madrid you know because um because <laughs> i'm personally extremely interested in that and i think the audience is are um people from over the world and they travel quite a bit and they'd be able to work from home remotely and they're gonna come to madrid so they're gonna love that as well so <laughs> and i can't wait for uh next week our uh, follow-up episode so wrap up this podcast today with marcelo could you tell us maybe two or three blockchain projects that you believe is extremely important and have so much potential that is contributing towards um our brighter future okay so uh of projects that i know here one that is like doing something very good uh helping other people that i really love and they use uh, crypto and blockchain of course is ethic hub and you can help this project by buying their governance token or just going to their crowdfunding uh, platform where you can help uh, some uh, farmers in Mexico to uh, have um, lending where they can grow their coffee. So you can uh, look for that uh, pro uh, project. It's great. Uh, there's another one about uh, Custodia, uh, how do you say this in English? Because I think it's the same. Uh, that's called Onise. Onis. Uh, it's great. They are like going very big and they are doing like all this work with uh, regulation here in in Spain uh, for cryptos to be like more adopted and be reg regulated. So that's very important. And Oh my God, is that there, there are so many projects. Um, and there are other ones, like I'm going to name some very uh, fastly. Uh, Token City and Crypto Quantica, they are tokenizing uh, things to help projects to be uh, funding for what they are doing. So that's great. And there are education projects with Tutelus, where you can learn a lot about blockchain and crypto. And of course, Crypto Plus, I think is a very good place if you want to follow it, our content. We are always communicating in Spanish for people to learn more about everything. So, and well, there, there's a lot more, I think, uh, next week that I hope you will be here to follow up this podcast so you can meet uh, all these projects and and uh, you can see what people are building here in, in Spain and Latin America. Yes, absolutely. I'm super excited. And um, of the project Marcela just mentioned, we're going to get the link and we'll, all of them, everything we mentioned here is going to be uh, on the show notes. And disclaimer that assume that me or Marcela are investor in all the projects we have mentioned, right? And also we're not financial advisor. Please do your own research before taking the decisions they, because everything have risks. And so with that said, you know, such amazing conversation, like one hour and 15 minutes passed by like that. And um, I'm super honored to, you know, ask you these questions, learn more about your journey and how you see the world as well because i think understand ourselves and understand where the future is going and work towards that work towards ourselves as an important part of the future in a non-egotistic way 
but a loving way, but a practical way is extremely important. And that's how we together can build a brighter future. So Marcella, thank you so much. And uh, see you next week at the Crypto Plaza. And I can't wait. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, and see you next week here in Crypto Plaza. And um, thank you everyone for watching. And please, if you need anything, uh, you can contact me on cryptoplaza.com at that yes. Okay, amazing. And we'll obviously link out that too. So, okay, Marcela, I'll see you next week then. <laughs> Ciao. See you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.